Hello, survivors, and welcome to a tutorial. It's Fantastic Mr. Ghost. I'm going to cover some basic modding uh, concepts here. Uh, how to mod seven days to die. It's really simple to do. I'm not going to go into every single detail of every single aspect. Uh, that There's a prerequisite here that you do know how to, you know, manipulate files in Windows and potentially unzip particular files, but I'll showcase the unzipping process as well. So, and also it's assumed that you're running off of Steam. So if you have Steam, you know, if you purchase seven days of die through Steam, uh, you'll, you know, be able to do this fairly easily. And unfortunately, from what I understand, console players do not have the ability to mod Xbox and PlayStation 5. Uh, this is PC only obviously but eventually maybe you'll get a pc and you'll be able to mod seven days to die i have two websites open here one is seven days to die mods i do not use this site however there are certain mods on this site that you will not be able to get from other sites uh, there's a lot of ads on here <laughs> so yeah there are certain mods on here that may not be on the Nexus. Just be forewarned on that. And the link is right here, seven days to die, uh, right there, seven days to die mods.com. The next one, this is the one I use, and it's the Nexus. But just be mindful that not all mods are going to be on the Nexus, some will be on the seven days to die.com. And if there are any others out there, please list them in the in the uh, comment section down below. All right, so we're on the Nexus. I'm not logged in or anything here. This is just a web browser that I don't use. So as you can see right here, I have seven days to die up top here. And how you get that is you go to games and then type in seven days to die. It'll come up with a thing down here, uh, I think. Uh, and it'll set your game to seven days to die. And then you can, I guess, X that out. There you go. So let's go through that. So click on here, the little arrow games, and I'm going to search for seven days, seven days two, and that'll bring you to here, search results, click on this box, you know, the image there, and now it sets it here and up here, you'll see it is always on mods so what you can do is uh scroll down man they really pepper ads on these this is insane so scroll on down and you'll see that here are the mods right here they have new today this week popular popular all time click on that one and you'll see that you know some of these are you know these are the most downloaded or whatever firearm expansion all that good stuff now you can search here for mods, for example, the Nomad. And you'll see right here, all you gotta do is just type it in and it'll start to filter it down. And we can click on that and it hyperlinks to the Nomad. Now, uh, while we're here, one of the things that I want to point out is always, and I'm guilty of this too, always, always read <laughs> everything here. First thing is requirements. And this will tell you the mods that, if there are any, dependent on the mod that you're looking to install. So always, 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 you know, be aware of that and download whatever is recommended here or requirements. Yeah, requirements. And it's a little filter thing and you can collapse these permissions, credit, mirrors. Uh, I think they're, mirror is github okay and then there's the change logs here if you're interested in that now this is really important here read everything here because there is some things that um they list here now it should say it um uh, the mod devs finding out that uh they're this mod is being pulled from here and apparently being sold now, here is something right here. This mod requires EAC to be disabled. In Steam, you uh, right click on that. Well, there's a, you know, through the menu systems there, um, you, you have to disable the 
uh, I think it's easy anti-cheat. Yeah. So you have to disable that in order to install mods for seven days to die. Now, it also says, oh, it's for only 1.0. I will not make versions for older and requests will be, okay. Now in here somewhere, it says, do not install on existing saves. So if you have something you're playing right now, currently, that's what you're looking for. You want information here prior to installing these mods into your seven days to die mods folder. Okay. So just be aware of that. The next thing I want you to do is, uh, if you, well, we'll get to this in a second. Here's the images. Uh, here's videos. Get this. Here's my video. <laughs> I created this did really well on the channel. Thank you all for watching it. We have a bugs area here. If you want to read these, you can keep it up, uh, keep up to date with what's going on. There might be a bug here that you see. I'm like, oh, I can't play the, play the mod with this bug. And the posts. The posts are pretty, I don't know. I don't really like this particular format they have here. It's kind of tricky to figure out what's going on. The red here is, um, this is IDC, obviously, the mod dev. So you can see he's made, you know, a response. So you can read through these and get an idea of maybe there's some issues that maybe you wouldn't be aware of, or maybe you're looking for something, a reason. Oh, I'm having this problem. Let's see if it's addressed in the forums. So, you know, come here first. So let's scroll up here and we'll go into the files now. And here's where all the magic happens. Now I'm not logged in here. You have to register and then log in, and then you can download these files. The first thing here is manual download. This is what I'm doing with seven days to die currently. Now you can have the mod manager, which is the vortex. The vortex is what the Nexus, they have an application that you can install onto your desktop and it helps you manage the mods. So if there's any issues with load order, it will help you sort that out. So I highly recommend a mod manager download if you're using multiple mods from different mod developers. Right now, I just have a couple mods that aren't conflicting, so I'm not worried about that, but it helps a lot in resolving any issues. So you can manually download these here and then they go into your downloads folder. So let's take a look at that. All right, you'll notice here that I have a two files here that are zipped. So I clicked, let's, you know, imagine I clicked on those links and it just downloads to your downloads directory or wherever you have downloads being sent to. Normally in Windows, it is your downloads directory here. So right click on this particular file here and this is a uh, Raven's Hearst. And then I also have a quests expanded. Now you can't just take this file and put it into your seven days to die mods folder, which I'll get to into in a second. You have to unpack it or unzip it. So right click and it will say extract all right here. And it'll ask you, do you want it to go here? Yes. And then it'll go through its little process extracting all the files. Now this is a huge overhaul mod, but so we'll, oh, when this is done, we'll take a look. A few moments later. All right, I decided to switch to the quest ones because the Ravenshurst is huge. This is a complete overhaul of the game. So what we have here is quests expanded. So we double click on that and there's another file nested inside here. So we have quests expanded again. This is all the mod files right here. So what I found is you want to right click on that and you can either cut or copy, but let's go ahead and just copy that. All right, now here's where all the magic happens. So what you want to do is navigate to wherever your games are. They could be on the C drive or the D drive. And in my case, I have them on my D drive. Games is where Steam sets up a, um, you know, a folder. And you, if you're seasoned, you will already know this, but uh, you'll have a games, Steam apps, common, and then the game. So in this case, seven days to die. Now, most ch uh, chances are you'll already have a mods folder. So let's go into that. Now, what's interesting is that this 
TFP Harmony. That was already there. I don't know how that got there. And then what I want to do is right click and paste. And you're done. That's it. So I have quests expanded now installed, so to speak. So, uh, and let's see, I've got the tool belt. I've got an enhanced HUD, the Nomad. I have a loot bag increased timer mod. And then I have core and quartz, which is a part you're, it's required by the Nomad right here, the IDC Nomad. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete, let's see, I'm going to delete this one because I'm not, I don't want to install it right now because I have a current save I'm playing with. And so let's go ahead and I'll show you what happens when you start up seven days to die. Once, and I'm not entirely sure if anybody knows this, I disabled EAC, the anti-cheat, the easy anti-cheat. I disabled it in Steam but it still comes up with a box. So let's go take a look at that and start up seven days to die. Alrighty folks, I'm in the game. For some reason, this screen was not capturing by OBS here, but we're here. So as you can see, I have a box that popped up here on the game and it in Steam, I do have anti-cheat disabled. So if anyone knows why this is popping up, please let me know in the comment section below. Because I went in there and found out where the anti-cheat, you know, selection is. And it, I think it's a settings thing. I'm not going to get into the Steam settings because that's another whole video probably, if anything. So if you disable anti-cheat and you get this box still, that's fine. All you got to do is click OK here. So let's read what's saying. It says anti-cheat and in incompatible mods. Tried loading at least one mod that has custom code. This is not supported with anti-cheat active. Click OK if you want to restart with anti-cheat disabled. Click cancel if you want to continue without those mods loaded. So this is to keep people from getting onto servers with mods. And, you know, like there's a PvP type thing going on where you're not only fighting zombies, but other players, PvE and PvE or whatever. So that's why they're so strict on this. Anything that you do on servers, you know, with other players, they want to make sure it's a fair, you know, play. So you just click OK on that. If you do get the box, the game will restart. As you can see, its screen is black here, so it's restarting. It'll take a little while to catch. And there we go. So once it starts back up, anti-cheat is now officially disabled. So I got to figure out why that's happening. Like I said, if you guys know, let me know why. Because I didn't, you know, I did disable in easy anti-cheat. I don't care. I don't want it on. I don't care about it. So then you just go in and continue your game. Like I said, be very careful and read all the mod instructions and details on the mods page. Make sure that the mod will not affect your current save, you know, and screw up your save. Because the Nomad will do that. It does break your saves. It resets your character. And your it resets your game. <laughs> it's, uh, everything gets reset. You have all your items on your character, but you lose everything. Uh, your level and your trader mission progress. That's what happened to me when I did a... I was just doing some test saves and stuff, and I go, oh, it did reset. Okay, cool. Because <laughs> I had a little pro progress in a, in a test save. And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I see what it's doing now. And I already knew that it was going to do that. All right, so that should do it. I uh, hope you enjoy the tutorial. I hope it helps. Peace out.